Item number, SCP-196. Object class, Euclid Kater. Special containment procedures, SCP-196 must be kept wholly ignorant of any information regarding the reason for his containment. The subject is to be kept in a two-room cell inside Site-17. This cell is to be furnished with whatever SCP-196 requests, as long as the request does not show any obvious likely lethal use and does not violate any SCP procedure. Subject must cohabit with at least one member of the site's Level 2 security personnel, who must be armed exclusively with non-lethal weaponry. Subject is allowed to freely wander the installation, if accompanied by at least one member of Site-17's security personnel. Note that all staff below Level 3 have been told he is a safe class object. SCP-196 has agreed to wear a satellite tracking anklet. Subject was told that removal of this anklet would result in his death, but this is not actually the case. SCP-196 displays no extraordinary physical ability, thus probability of escape is negligible. Description SCP-196 appears to be a middle-aged male under 2 meters tall, of African-American descent. He claims to be 47 years old. Subject has black hair and brown eyes. There are no abnormal physical characteristics. Subject displays all basic needs of a normal human being. Subject tested with an IQ of 109, well within normal parameters. Subject's psychological examination indicated that he suffers from institutionalization and Stockholm Syndrome in relation to the Foundation's security staff. SCP-196 demonstrates no Euclid type or other abnormal abilities. Note, I've run the full battery of tests and the exam says that the guy is normal. Dr. Addendum 1, 96, 01. Those with level 4 security clearance should see document 1, 96, 01 for information regarding SCP-196's origin and subsequent Keter classification. Level 4 clearance required. Security clearance adequate, access authorized. Addendum 1, 96, 01. Document 1, 96, 01. SCP-196 appeared at on 2000 inside of site. SCP-196 claims he was recruited in of 2000 through standard class D recruitment procedures for testing of SCP. Subject also claims that his younger self is currently living in another location in genetic identification checks confirm that SCP-196 has encountered Foundation security personnel in the past in an incident at Site-17 on 1960. During that incident, SCP-196 was far older and was killed by SCP security personnel during an attempted break-in at that facility. SCP-196 was, at that time, not known to the Foundation as anything other than a lone human assailant. However, he was found to be carrying SCP and several purely mundane weapons. While a Euclid-class event of this nature would normally result in an individual being terminated to prevent any potential for a catastrophic paradox, SCP-196's future self is already dead. This means that if he were permitted to die, a catastrophic paradox could occur damaging or destroying this continuity. SCP-196 must be kept alive until he decides to and successfully manages to escape of his own accord and somehow travels back to experience his own death while carrying SCP. Note that because of the potential for paradox, SCP-196 must be kept far away from his younger double in. Additionally, a covert observation team must be permanently attached to SCP-196's younger self to protect his life. His dedicated security force should otherwise not intervene. Failure to permit the timeline from unfolding naturally could result in damaging or destroying this continuity. For these reasons, SCP-196, despite being otherwise mundane, must be carefully monitored and has been classified as a Euclid-Keter class object.